Our goal for today is to get to a place called chalon sur Sound. Sunshine! So here we are in Chalon and we've decided that we might just stop. Ready? Ready! And just like that, we are back! It's been a really weird few days. We were pretty much ready to leave. Locked down France. I don't know how long it will last. We are here for the indefinite future. I'm Maya, and this is Aladino. In mid-November, we converted our 28-foot sailboat into a riverboat, and we started going north, from the Mediterranean all the way to the North Sea. In front of us, we had 2,000 kilometers, 200 locks, an upstream current, and the onset of winter. Join us as we navigate the inland waterways during off-season. This is North Through the Continent. We're going north through the Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. Good morning, good morning. So we are at this little dock, which you might remember from the end of the last episode. It's just this small little dock next to this closed down restaurant, which I'm sure is bustling in the summer. But right now it is December and it is not bustling at all. Um, our goal for today is to get to a place called chalon sur Sound. It's not too far from here. And apparently there's a pleasure craft harbor there, which we're hoping to stay in. I have a lot of editing to catch up on right now. I'm a bit behind because it's been cold and we've been on this big voyage, um, but I need to catch up now. So I'm going to be inside for most of the day. Aladino's going to be steering, so we probably aren't going to get tons of footage of the day, but uh, I'll make sure to get some footage when we arrive in Chalon. Sunshine! Got a bit bouncy with the current coming in. Yeah. A little bit of swell. Yeah. We continued on and arrived to Chalon sur Saône in the afternoon. We were happy to find a lovely harbor, and even though the river was quite flooded, it still seemed safe and secure. <laughs> Chalon itself was also charming. It was at one time an important port, where wines were distributed to be delivered via the waterways to other parts of France. Now, Chalon's economy lies mainly with industries like plastics and metallurgy, but the historic part of town still dates back to a time of cobblestones and ornate cathedrals. Good morning from chalon sur Saône. Last night we got to talking about our plans. It's currently the middle of December, December 16th, so not too much longer to go till Christmas. And for this whole journey, we've known that at some point in the winter we will tie up for a few months. I would really like to visit my family in Canada again. And Aladino unexpectedly, or perhaps expectedly if uh, he had paid more attention, but he has to do some mandatory military service in Switzerland. Switzerland is one of the only countries, only European kind of Western countries left that still has mandatory military service for all young men. So here we are in Chalon and we've decided that we might just stop for a few months, tie the boat up, and then continue on in the spring in some warmer weather. And so I think that's what we're doing. We're getting the boat ready to leave it. Aladino just went and bought some tarps. Um, but we have had a little bit of an adventure. We woke up this morning. We should have filmed it actually, but we were just kind of like one of those things in the moment of just taking action right away. But we woke up this morning and the river had pushed just such a vast quantity of logs and sticks and bottles and junk uh, in between our boat and the dock. There was so much stuff in the river that built up next to our boat, it actually shoved itself into our through hulls 
And so our sink got shoved full of little river Same crap. Same with the toilet. And yeah. just poking it with a stick didn't seem to do the trick. So Aladino's disassembling everything. And what did you do here? You removed the sink. Yeah, and for better went... access. And now I'm taking it away part for part because uh, yeah, gunk accumulates in the hoses. So I'll just give them a thorough cleaning as well at the same time. So we moved to a different spot this morning where we won't be getting the full brunt of everything running down the river. And yeah, just putting the boat to bed for a few months before we return again in the spring. The next few days were spent in a whirlwind of preparation. We covered the boat, packed up our things, and made travel arrangements. Our plan was to return in early March and finish our journey through the continent by the end of May. That would be perfect timing to start the sailing season in the north. Little did we know that the world was about to change. Ready? Ready! And just like that, we were gone. And just like that, we are back. It is now about th eh, two months, two months since we left. It's warmer, thank goodness. The river is also a lot higher and there's a lot more current. I thought it was flooding when we left. Well, it was, now it's flooding um, a lot more. I don't know if this is normal because everything on shore is really quite underwater. But we're here for at least a few more days to wait for packages, do a few things to the boat, and then we'll see if we can continue up river. All right, the tarps are all off and it looks like the tarps actually fared pretty well. They didn't rip or anything and they also did a pretty good job protecting the boat while we were gone. So I thought that I would show you some of the ingenious things that Aladino put into place to make this tarp system work the way it did. I don't know, if you ever need to put a tarp on your own boat, maybe some of these things will help you. So first are these uh, kind of stringers that go over the mast. You can obviously put these over the boom if the mast is up, and then you could also string something, like if your mast was standing up there, you could string something between your mast and the bow pulpit to create another top line, kind of an A-frame, just to act as a support for the tarp so it doesn't cave in too much and doesn't allow water to pool as much. The next thing is he put these ropes over the top of the stanchions to prevent the stanchions punching through the tarps. He also took his diving boots and stuck them on the top of this a-frame structure that's holding our mast in place just to prevent chafe again. Basically just prevent chafe wherever you can. This is less about the tarp and it's more just about um, leaving your boat in general. Uh, Aladino took off the anchor winch and he also took away the anchor just because, I don't know, they're kind of blingy expensive things and I'm sure they would have been fine here but we didn't know the place really when we came here and so we just thought we'll take off anything that's maybe un more enticing to steal. Also, not to incentivate theft, I put all the fuel jocks on the opposite side of the boat just so it, under the tarp it would make it harder. No, but everything looks fine and I mean it's not like I was worried. And this is how we left things inside. Basically our goal on the inside was just to allow as much airflow as possible throughout the whole boat, especially near the hull. So our bedding we hung up in the middle of the boat instead of leaving it um, laying on the bed. And we also took all of our clothes and basically just like all the stuff that was in our closet, um, we took out and left in bags on the bench. Of course, we put our bed cushions standing up. Again, all important airflow. So right here in the cockpit, um, I left the manual bilge pump handle in the manual build pump so that if something were to happen with the boat that this would be quite obvious and readily apparent to start pumping the boat out without having to try and gain access to the boat first but of course we didn't need it which is great and of course because we are leaving the boat in colder months Aladino uh, winterized the engine and we also drained all the water out of our toilet and out of the sink so that there's no room for things to freeze we spent the afternoon running around, doing laundry and cleaning the boat before we settled in for the evening to a grand surprise. I'm still not sure exactly what the occasion was, but chalon sur saint gave us a lovely welcome home. We were feeling happy and cozy. At the time, there were some concerning things in the news, but so far we, and most of the Western world, still felt removed from it. Italy had reported a sharp spike of cases of a new coronavirus that would first heard about sometime in January, but even so, the country wasn't in lockdown, and Aladino's family in Italy reported that life still went on as usual. 
As we watched people huddle closely together to watch the fireworks, there was a bit of a nagging doubt in the back of my mind about what this virus would have in store for the world. But we had no idea the extent to which this microscopic particle was about to change everything. It's starting to feel so much more like home now. I'm making dinner and Aladino is putting the covers back on our mattresses that we washed. And yeah, I mean, I know a video doesn't convey like warmth and smell, unfortunately, but it's just, it's smelling so much better. It's warm inside now. Uh, Aladino wiped the ceiling because it had kind of a thin layer of kind of like a moldy thing on it. Everything is just smelling much better now. I'm making dinner and we're about to settle in for a nice evening, I think. Good morning. So today is a cleaning day. We did a lot of laundry and everything yesterday, but now we're gonna basically disinfect the entire boat and also start to disassemble parts of the boat because our big mission for the spring is to add insulation to the boat. Since we're going up north, we wanna insulate the boat, which is gonna be a big mission. And clean we did. We pulled everything out and piled it into the cockpit. What we found wasn't pretty, but with some good scrubbing, it all came out just fine. The plan was to spend one week at the dock cleaning the boat and installing our insulation before continuing the journey. The only problem was that the river was still really flooded with a strong current. We had heard that it was on the way down, but would still have to wait and see. Oh my gosh, that was a whirlwind, but the day is finally ending and we've just brought the mattresses back inside. Uh, the wooden slats that were on the side of the hull in many places up in the V-Berth and beside the cities, all those wooden slats we've tied up. You can see them there. We just tied them up into bundles and we're leaving them there because tomorrow is Monday, which means the office will be open and our insulation has arrived already, but we just haven't been able to pick it up because it was the weekend. So tomorrow we'll pick up our insulation and then we can start installing it on the hall. Yeah, we've just kind of like moved things in. It's supposed to rain tonight, which is a bit annoying. So we have to keep shuffling things in and out, I think during this whole process. So yeah, now it's time for shower maybe a beer. I'm really tired. It was a lot of cleaning yeah, today. Too. Yeah, so time to wind down. <laughs> mail time! <laughs> we got a bunch of packages delivered to us in Shalom. Some of which we ordered, some of it sent to us by people. You want to show what we got, Chet? Yes, yeah, so now I have to continue. Okay, well, continue by showing what we got in the packages. No. Shatsi, you're so difficult. Yes. <laughs> Oh, so you got one scraper. Yeah, I got a scraper. Nice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. And then? And we also got some cleaning products from a subscriber. You want to show that? What is it? Brilliant all-purpose cleaner. It's supposed to be for boats. And not harmful, non-toxic. Cool. So we can use that for further cleaning. So the days passed quickly. We were in a flurry of work trying to get ready to leave. The water level was indeed dropping, promising that we should be able to cast off the lines and face the current once again. We got the insulation up. Don't worry, we'll have a full episode on that. But as soon as we were ready to leave, that's when everything changed. Hello. It has been a few days since I last turned on the camera. And there's a reason for that. It's been a really weird few days. Plans have changed almost by the hour, it seems like. And I just haven't really known what to say or what to update you on because I haven't known myself. So basically when we arrived back on the boat, it was the beginning of March. Coronavirus was spreading through Italy, but Italy was not on a full lockdown. There were a few towns in the north uh, with more cases and those towns were being isolated, but the rest of Europe was totally business as usual. And obviously as the days progressed, all of that changed really, really, really quickly. So after the first week of being on the boat, we were pretty much ready to leave. We were going to leave on Tuesday, 
but on Sunday, I think it was, the French government locked down France. So, we are here for the indefinite future. I don't know how long it will last. Hopefully, by the time you're watching this video, we're about usually two to three months behind um, real time by the time we post on YouTube, so hopefully things will be kind of returning back to normal by the time you see this, but right now it's a big time of uncertainty. So our world shrank down to the size of our boat and the dock. For the next two weeks, I never left the dock even once. I showered under the hose, I did exercises next to the boat, and I washed my hands furiously. I shrank away whenever somebody walked along the dock, holding my breath and ducking inside magic carpet. This tiny, invisible enemy was terrifying. But as the days rolled past and the sun grew hotter and stayed longer in the sky, I began to relax. This new normal now felt, well, normal. We still never really left the dock, but we had settled in. We had our projects and we had our hobbies. We were working on things we loved. But beyond that, we still didn't know anything. Would we be here for two more weeks? Four? Six? Would we be here for the rest of the summer? As the lockdown kept getting extended, we transitioned into our new normal. It was a normal filled with boat work, video work, lots of good food, and dreaming of future plans. So on that note, this episode ends. Our future, and the future of the world, is filled with uncertainty. We are lucky that our small little existence here on our boat is a pleasant one. And once we are finally allowed to leave the dock again, the story of our journey north will change considerably. The weather will be warm and sweet, instead of cold and biting. The towns might still be deserted, but for different reasons. We will have to keep to ourselves rather than make friends on the way. But we are lucky. Everything I thought I knew about the world has suddenly been wiped away. Yet we are still existing on our small but delightful boat. And that privilege is not lost on me. Thank you so much to all of you for watching. Your thumbs up, subscriptions, and comments really, really help keep this channel going. An extra big thank you to our patrons, without whom it would not be possible for us to make these videos every single week, and an extra special thank you to these folks who really go above and beyond to make sure that these episodes keep happening. We'll see you all next week.